때도 없이 심으를 가고 고민이 생겼니 초등학교 영어 수업 시간 내 배웠었던 형제 진행형 같아 하루에 열번 Magandang araw, attorney. Ako pala si Sumiri. Pumunta ako dito para humingi ng tulong. Meron kasing mga taong nangungupahan sa lupa na nabili namin sa Busan Village General Santo City. Tinaalis na namin sila dahil gusto na namin gamitin yung lupa pero masyadong matigas ang ulo nila. Andun pa rin sila. So, pwede mo bang ikwento sa akin kung paano nangyari lahat? Ganito kasi yun, attorney. Bumili kasi kami ng asawa ko ng lupa na na-foreclose galing sa Casano Realty Housing Corporation. Mga tatlong taon nang nang nakakaraan. Nung pupunta kami doon, meron palang mga tao na nakatera na doon. At sabi nila na nungungupahan daw sila. Sinabihan na namin na umalis sa sila para para magamit na namin ang lupa pero ano pa rin sila. Pinatawag na namin sila sa barangay para makipag-usap ng maayos pero hindi rin sila sumipot. Kaya anong pwedeng anong pwedeng gawin natin attorney para matuluyan na silang mapaalis doon? Mm, so sa akin pagkakaintindi, yung mga taong nakatira doon sa lupa mo ngayon, sila ay Uh, nagsisilbing mga unlawful detainer. So, ibig sabihin, bawal na silang tumira pa doon kasi ikaw na nagmamayari ng lupa ngayon. Opo, tama po, attorney. So, we currently have a case concerning the issue of unlawful detainer which falls under the scope of cases wherein the summary procedure is applied. So, by virtue of the rules of expedited procedures in first-level courts, the cases covered na civil cases by summary procedure are the following. Number one, of course, is forcible entry and unlawful detainers. Second are civil actions and complaints for damages where the claims do not exceed 2 million pesos. And third, cases for enforcement of barangay amicable settlement agreements, and arbitration award where the money exceeds 1 million pesos. Fourth, are cases solely for the revival of judgment of any first-level court. And lastly, the civil aspect of violations of batas pambansa bilang dalamput dalawa if no criminal action has already been instituted. I remember this, Attorney Vincenzi. It is one of the salient proceedings under the civil and criminal procedure that expedites actions filed before the first-level courts. So how do we approach this, attorney? Firstly, we need to construct a complaint to be filed before the court. Upon submission, the court will be verifying the pleading and determine if the case falls under summary procedure. Once determined, they will be examining attached evidence and allegations found in the complaint. If the court finds out any possible grounds for the dismissal of the civil action, they may dismiss it outright. But if the court is unable to discover any ground for dismissal, the court must issue summons that should specify that the rules on summary procedure is applicable. And after 10 days from the court's service of summons, the defendant must file an answer to the complaint. Defenses not included in the pleadings shall be deemed waived except when the matter concerns lack of jurisdiction of the court over the subject matter. And what happens if the defendant fails to file an answer? If the defendant fails to file an answer, then the court may proceed to render judgment according to the facts alleged in the complaint. Yes, that's right. So the rules of summary procedure are indeed used without so much pleadings for the speedy disposition of the case. That's why I need you to draft a complaint immediately. Here are the data that I gathered while interviewing our clients. So with your extensive knowledge of summary procedure, I will be expecting you to draft a complaint that is indeed sufficient. Hello, 
for me. I am Shinhe Young and I have been living in Busan Village, General Santa City for about 10 years now and only recently have I received a copy of a complaint. May I see the copy? Here, attorney. Okay, just go on. Please give me the details. The allegations stated there are not true because I am actually the one who is deprived of the opportunity to redeem my property because of mere technicalities and misinformation that was provided to me and my family. Well, the truth is, my daughter actually already bought the land from the original owner about 10 years ago and of course, we were issued or executed a deed of sale with assumption of mortgage and since then my family has resided in the, that area and then we even introduced improvement to the same subject plot okay what else happened later on so we were shocked when we discovered later on that it was actually already sold to someone else and we tried to communicate with the housing loan company from where it was mortgaged to settle the account. However, they told us that the value of the property reached almost a million. We were so frustrated, but we looked for different ways in order to obtain such amount. The housing company, however, never stated or clarified to us that the account may be settled for at least less than 180,000 pesos. And then? We were only given false information that the redemption period had already expired. So we learned that the Casano Realty Housing Corporation executed the foreclosure of the mortgage over the property. The plaintiffs then registered a deed of conveyance being the highest bidder of the public auction in the amount of 177,000. Okay, so you're saying that the plaintiffs filed an unlawful detainer case against you. But you are the real owners of the subject property. Since this case is a suit under the sum rules on summary procedure, we will drop an answer and submit it based on your stated defenses so that the court will not render judgment based on the complaint filed. Anyways, this case will just be resolved immediately. During the hearing, the judge will only uh, require us, the parties, to submit a position paper and the court will render its decision or judgment after 30 days. So, do you confirm my action? Yes, authority. Thank you. Settled is the rule that what determines the nature of the action as well as the court which has jurisdiction over the case are the allegations in the complaint. In ejectment cases, the complaint should embody such statement of facts as to bring the party clearly within the class of cases for which the statutes provide a remedy, as these proceedings are summary in nature. The complaint must indicate enough on its face to grant the court jurisdiction without resorting to parole evidence. 
An unlawful detainer lawsuit seeks to regain possession of real property from someone who illegally withholds possession beyond the expiration or termination of his right to hold possession under any express or implicit contract. The defendant's possession in unlawful detainer was permissible at first but became illegal when the right to possess expired or was terminated. The court determines that there was insufficient evidence presented in the complaint to support an unlawful detainer in this instance. The plaintiffs stated in their complaint that they had a clear intention of regaining possession of the subject property and that this intention was supported by the execution of the deed of conveyance under their names as evidence that they had acquired ownership of the property. The Torrent System title grants property ownership attributes, including possession. However, ejectment cases may not be decided based on ownership proof, as key jurisdictional facts must be proven in the complaint. In this case, plaintiffs relied on their cause of action of the deed of conveyance executed by Casano Realty Housing Company, alienating its rights over the subject property to them. Therefore, their cause of action is a recovery of possession not for ejectment. Wherefore, considering the above premises, this case is hereby order dismissed without prejudice to the filing by either party of an action regarding the ownership of the property involved. So ordered, given in chamber this 22nd day of March 2024. Ano po ang desisyon ng korte attorney? Mahirap nang sabihin pero na-dismiss yung kasa natin. Pero gusto mo bang umapela? Sige po attorney. Apela po tayo. 